Hello everyone, my name is Fiona again. I am a product manager on Microsoft Teams, driving user engagement, making Teams feel more fun and personalized, and that everyone gets their notifications. Before that, I was working on an enterprise feature in Microsoft Azure, and before that, I was studying engineering at the University of Toronto and interned at Amazon in Hong Kong. For today's webinar, I'll be sharing the differences between B2B and B2C products and PM roles. Having shifted both B2B and B2C products as a PM, I want to share with you my evolved understanding of each role. What do I enjoy working as the most? Why I made the switch? How to find out which one is for you? And lastly, regardless of what kind of PM you are, how can you apply these learnings to your job today? Let's start with the terminology here. A B2B or a business to business company provides services or products to other businesses. A B2C or a business to consumer company sells directly to the individual consumers. Before I get into how the products are defined, let's first understand the B2B and B2C markets. A couple things to highlight in this table. The target audience for the B2C market is end users, just like you and I, but for B2B, it's other companies. Given the size of the end users, the, it makes sense that the B2C market is significantly larger than the B2B market. And the people who are making the decisions for purchasing or using a B2C product, it's us, the individuals. But for a B2B, it's decided by typically a team within the enterprise. In terms of making the decision, for a B2C product is typically by our wants and needs, but for a business is very rational. There must be a need to purchase that product to address a specific problem that the enterprise has. Now, let's do a pop quiz. Here are a few products, apps, and services, and you tell me if they're considered B2B or B2C. I'll, get, I'll give you guys a few seconds here. And here's the reveal of a rough divide of how these products, apps, or services align in terms of their B2B and B2C markets. As you can see, it's not always a clear divide. There are a few that are in the middle because a lot of these apps have more than one side. We know them as a consumer product, but there's also a business version too, or vice versa. For example, Uber has the consumer facing app where you take it to get a ride, but there's also Uber Freight who targets corporations say like Walmart to ship the products for them. Before I dive into what do B2B and B2C PMs do, let's first revisit what is a PM and its responsibilities. So a PM is responsible for making sure that a team ships a great product. The PM sets the vision and strategy defines success, makes decisions, and takes holistic responsibility for the product, from little details to the big picture. Since I've been on both sides, I'll walk you through how my day-to-day -day varied over the course of a product cycle on the B2B and B2C end. There are three main parts of this cycle. First, I need to figure out what to build. Then, I help the team make progress on building it. And lastly, I prepare for the launch, or we call it the shipping phase. 
starting off with figuring out what to build. I will have to do research, planning, write the specs, and define the success metrics. When working on an enterprise feature, customer requests are key in my research and also reading the industry reports to see where the market is going. But on the consumer end, a lot of the ideas were generated in-house, meaning that either a PM came up with the idea or it was a result of a hackathon project. The other parts of the ideas would come from user research and also a competitive analysis, looking at where our competition has. When it comes to planning, it's typically top down on the B2B side and bottom up from the consumer end because the ideas were generated mostly in-house, whereas on the B2B side, a lot of this of the ideas came from our customers or leadership teams. In terms of writing specs, I found this to be super interesting because I solely used Word docs for my functional specs when I was working on the enterprise feature. But when I moved to consumer, a lot of people were using PowerPoints to really showcase the user interface when building a new feature. And it was much easier for people to understand where you're trying to build. In terms of um, success metrics, B2B PMs cared more about the revenue, how many licenses uh, were sold, and also how many paying users we have. But on the consumer end, since a lot of the products are free or on a subscription, subscription basis, we care more about the retention rates and the stickiness of our users. When it comes to building um, a B2B or a B2C product, collecting the requirements came largely from cus customer calls for, um, for enterprise feature that we talked to a variety of our customers and to see what they're looking for. When it comes to consumer, since there are just so many users, we would do a user research or look at our competitive um, competition to see what they have been doing and what's worked for them, and then use them as our user scenarios. When it comes to design, on the B2B end, I was the designer, or I was the first person to take a step at what the wireframe should look like, what the end-to-end -end scenario would be. But on the consumer end, there are many designers since there's a stronger focus on creating delightful UX. So we have lots of in-house designers to help with the wireframing and prototyping. Privacy reviews. This is another surprising thing for me because we had very minimal privacy reviews on the enterprise end because a lot of the features we ship were gated by the IT admins. But when it comes to consumer and if you're asking for users to provide any information or you're collecting any information of the user, then you need to go through a privacy review, make sure that things are all buttoned up. And this is specific to my situation where the client for the enterprise feature was just on web. But for teams, it's on mobile, desktop, and web. So it was quite interesting to see how shipping on these different clients um, uh, was like compared to just web on enterprise. Now we're getting to the stage where we're finally shipping the product, which is the most exciting part of this whole cycle. Once the engineers have coded the feature um, on, on the enterprise end, we would do usability study to see if the UI makes sense. And if users can actually understand it, we will show a prototype and walk them through it or ask them to go through the prototype themselves. 
or we would recruit customers in our private preview program so that they get a sneak peek and actually try to use the new feature in real life. If you're working on a consumer product, it's much easier to self-host because you would actually use it in your personal life. And also it will be rolled out to everybody within the company for internal doc fooding. We also have A-B tests and also a group of super fans who would help us to test. In terms of rollout is very similar for both B2B and B2C. It would first get checked in behind a feature flag. And when it's ready, we would remove the flag and release it to the public. User training, which is another um, aspect that's quite different between B2B and B2C. When I was on working on the enterprise feature, I made a bunch of videos explaining what the feature is and writing very detailed docs for the IT admins who were the target users. And also I traveled around the country to different sites and train our most valued professionals um, and customer PMs so that they can talk about these new features to their customers. On the consumer end, marketing actually plays a bigger role here to make videos, tutorials on how to use the features. And also our support pages are definitely a lot more friendlier or uses more friendlier language so that every average users will understand. In terms of marketing, I didn't do much as a PM on the enterprise end because we had customer PMs, we had um, MVPs in our sales team. And also we had a dedicated blog for releasing any new uh, features. On the consumer end is a lot more exciting because social media is involved and we have influencers to help us promote the features and also collaboration with tech blogs on press releases. Lastly, in terms of getting feedback after the product is shipped, for enterprise feature, I typically would go on calls with customers or visit them on site to see how they're using it in real life and what feedback they have for us. On the consumer end, it's a lot harder to reach out to everybody. So we look at NPS, ask them to take a survey, or to or do social listening on the internet to see what are people saying about this feature on forums or on Twitter. As you can see, the responsibilities of B2B and B2C product managers have plenty of overlap and draw from the same well of skills and tools. However, the strategy, goals, execution, and especially methods for research and user requirement collection will vary greatly. Now, what do I enjoy about each role? Starting with B2B. When I was working on that enterprise feature, I was hugely ener energized by customer visits. Hearing about their challenges and the scale that they were working with was very humbling. There's always room to make the products better, run faster, and release more often. Also, it's very gratifying to hear that the feature I worked on was used by these Fortune 500 companies, solving a very real problem and saving them time and money. Another aspect that I enjoy and miss the most from the BDC side was how easy it was to get direct feedback from paying customers. I became work BFFs with some customers and consultants over time because they were my go-to people when I needed a sounding board for new ideas. They were invested in my product, super accessible, just a phone call away since we were protected under NDA. Now, things that I didn't enjoy so much was the speed that the features were being developed and the less emphasis on building delightful UX. 
This is understandable because B2B products are more about what it can do and less about how to do it. We often un- operate under the assumption that B2B users are tech savvy. They're able to figure out and put up with a clunky UX if it gets the job done. So naturally, we tend to overwhelm the UI with lots and lots of controls at the compromise of usability and delightfulness. This would not fly in the B2C world because consumers will just leave if the UI is difficult to use. And me being someone who is very visual, who appreciates and is passionate about building great UX, I found it hard to influence this mentality, but it's getting much better now. Many B2B PMs are advocating for consumer great experience all around, which is awesome to see. Now going to B2C. I definitely enjoy the creative freedom the most since there's an unanimous focus on making consumer products fun and delightful. I get so inspired every time I work with designers on making an idea come alive beautifully. And with this particular consumer product I'm working on, my area spans across multiple platforms and verticals. So I get to set the vision, strategy, roadmap for the entire package. That's a great feeling. I'm also enjoying learning about user behavior and psychology. What's triggering their actions and why? These are such fascinating topics that I wasn't exposed to before. I'm so glad I've learned them. Unlike B2B products, your customers are not just those Fortune 500 companies, but it could be literally anyone, and they could be using your feature for a million different reasons. So it's much harder to figure out your personas, understand their motivations, preferences, and concerns. Also, getting good pointed and qualitative feedback is not as straightforward. I have dashboards showing Mao, Wow, Dow numbers, but consumer feedback is very scattered and often biased because people will often speak up only if they don't like something. And due to privacy reasons, it's almost impossible to profile these users by their age, gender, occupation, or location to understand where they're coming from so that I can keep that in mind when planning and honing the UX. Now, why did I make that switch from B2B to B2C? Through working as a PM on a B2B feature, I was convinced that product management is the right career for me. But the space that I got hired into was not. The area is appealing for some people, but I had no interest in being an expert there. Also, I couldn't relate to the customer myself since I was never in the position to use my own features. In addition, being a millennial who grew up with technology, I was definitely more familiar with consumer products like Instagram, Facebook, and Gmail. I use them every day. So I've got lots of op- opinions on them. Naturally, I want to be on a team that can influence these product decisions. I can relate to my users because I am one of them. Also, it's so much easier to explain to my parents or new people at a party what I do for a living. As to why I joined teams, that's because I saw how powerful it can be for organizational productivity and wanted to bring that to consumers like you and me so we can be more more productive and organized in life. In terms of how I switched, I made myself use, read, write about consumer products more and more in my day to day and think about why certain product decisions were made and not made. I shared more tips on PM interviewing in my previous talk. Feel free to check that out. Now, turning the spotlight over to you. Are you better suited for a B2B or B2C PM role? Let's find out. Let's first look at the qualities that would make each PM great. I think you'll be a great B2B PM if you love doing in-depth customer interviews or even going on site to listen to them and understand their needs. 
building a good and trusting relationship with your customers is crucial. You'd also enjoy doing market research because there's a steep learning curve from novice to being a thought leader. Because you need to spend the time to understand everything about your users and gain that level of expertise in that one area. I think you'd be a great B2C PM if you're data-driven, able to make a strong case for your proposals, come up with features that will make a big difference to the core metrics that your team or your company cares about, and that you're comfortable conducting experiments and analyze the data to extract insights and apply that back to your feature planning. It's also good to have a instinct on what users will like or won't like, and if a certain trend is going to stick or fade. Tell, tell me what you think about Clubhouse. You should at least have a good point of view. And usability testing, behavior science. These are also important to know since your hypotheses don't really have the same solid foundation as B2B PMs. And lastly, if you want to be able to explain to your parents what you do, I say B2C PM is the way to go. One more thing I want to mention here is that if you're early in career or just got into product management, it's very normal that you don't know if you want to be a B2B or a B2C PM. I'll offer my two cents here. Based on my observation, if you're a millennial or Gen Z, then it's very likely that you want to start on a consumer product. Because like me, we grew up with technology, iPhones, and social media. We can relate to the users better because majority of the time, we are the target audience. And you probably haven't even heard of Microsoft Azure, Salesforce, or Amazon Web Services before my talk, right? Because we never had to host our own photos in the cloud. We just upload them to Instagram, and Instagram uses those services to host the photos for us. However, as time passed by, we're exposed to more and more products intended for businesses, say like reporting time off or submitting performance reviews. We recognize the gaps in these tools and we can get really fed up sometimes and want to fix it ourselves. Many people start companies that way and invent solutions that address these business problems. And boom, you, just, you have just created a B2B product. That's why I see more young people working on B2C first and then slowly move to B2B as their career develops. That's just my observation. There's absolutely no rule for who would be a good B2B or B2C PM. Ultimately, it's up to you. What user problems you're passionate about solving and what gives you the most energy and gratification. If you're a PM already and you want to see if you're doing what you want to do, I highly recommend doing a PM Daisy exercise. It's a visual framework for evaluating your PM responsibilities, and you can use it to compare against your ideal position. This is my PM Daisy as of today, working on a consumer product. The intensity of the color indi indicates my personal involvement in each area. The darker the color, the more hands-on I am. So go to pmdaisy.com and fill out the form, then take a good look at your daisy graph. If you're hoping to be more of a B2C PM, then you might want to get more involved in data analytics and UX. And if you want to hone your B2B PM skills, you might want to get more experience in research. I think it would be good visual indicator to for you to compare where you are today and where you want to go. And you can bring this to your manager during your one-on-ones and express clear, clearly where you want to go and where you are today. So even if you are or want to be a B2B or B2C PM, is there anything that we can learn from our counterparts? I say, of course. 
For me, coming from an enterprise background, I treasured the culture of customer obsession and brought that over to my current team, where I advocate for routine reviews of user feedback and forming a community of internal dog fooders to get rapid feedback from. And if I were to go back to the world of B2B, I would definitely be the loudest person in design reviews, pushing for first-class UX for users and foster a culture of experimentation to test several designs or solutions at once to land on the best one. What about you? Share with the audience one thing that you learned being in the B2B or B2C space that you wish everyone would do. So that's all I had to share on the difference between managing a B2B and B2C product. I sincerely hope you've learned something new and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Also, I just got back to vlogging so you can catch me on YouTube and Twitter. I write a weekly newsletter called The Creative Outlet where I share my thoughts on PM, design, productivity, languages, anything that makes me creative. If you find that intriguing, give it a read and let me know what you think. This is my third talk at Product School. I have two more coming. If you're interested, you can sign up or watch the recordings of my other talks at productschool.com slash instructor slash Fiona Yang. Congratulations for making this far, and I can't wait to see you at the next one. A bientôt, 下次见了, 안녕, bye!